Thank you very much for joining us once again on PM Express. Tonight, I have a fascinating guest for you. You know him. He is COP Alex Mensa. And in the last few months, he's been front and center, taking up a lot of the space as far as the media is concerned, the headlines also, because obviously of a subject around the current IGP and a setting leaked tape, a video obviously that we saw in which he sat together with Bugri Nabu to have a conversation and the conversation around the alleged plot to remove the IGP. It's ended up in Parliament for a probe, but then subsequently he's retired. He's going into politics. So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm delighted that I get to sit with him to talk about all these very controversial matters. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. COP Alex Mensa. Thank you very much. Now, when I say COP Alex Mensa, I must add retired to it. Yes. Because you've been retired now for how long? For almost a month. With all that has happened in the last few weeks, you said you were able to sleep soundly. Very, very. And talking about sleeping soundly, many people will hear that and say, goodness me, with all the controversy that had sparked around you in the last you know, few months, how is he able to sleep that soundly? What really happened? What really that, that the, the controversy what was was triggered by the circulation of this video in which you obviously was seen with Burgi Nabu having a conversation about the IGP and the plan was to remove him. Tell me your story. What happened? You see, a lot of people have been asking these questions, but usually what I do is that because you were before the committee. I didn't want to go there, but now we finished. So let me give you just a small story about it. Like me and you having conversation privately in your room or in my room. Then you secretly record it. You bring it out. And you know, even bring the conversation that we had out. You edited the conversation. You dotted it and you brought it out. So I was not afraid of anything because I knew what actually took place. And I did not say anything wrong in the tape. I was not planning a coup in the tape. Neither was I planning to go and sell cocaine or steal. No. Or what I said in the tape is the truth and it's right. And as I said at the committee, if you give me the chance, I'll say it here. I'll say it anywhere. Because all what I said is the truth. And well, I'll stand by it. There are two things you said. Let's start with the first basic one on the tape. You said it was recorded and, and doctored. Yeah. Who did the recording? Who doctored it? That is what the committee is trying to find out. Because we didn't know it was being recorded. You didn't record it? No. We didn't know it was being recorded. It was yourself? From as far as the police service concerned, just yourself and who else who went to the meeting? Yes, I myself, Asari, and then Bugri Nabu. So the, were, were the only three people in the room? Yes. Okay. So one of you recorded it? I don't know. I can't. Did Bugri but Nabu, at least one Bugri of Nabu them, has said. Bugri one Nabu, of us knew yeah. that the recording was taking place. Bugri Nabu has said and he said it on the... Yeah, I said probably that he did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At the committee, he said he recorded it and gave it to the president. Isn't that what he said? Mm -hmm. And when they asked him at the committee, that you have a copy of the tape, he said no. So where did he get this extra that he brought to Atatia in the committee? Where did he get it? When did you first learn that this had been recorded? That was when I heard it in the media space. Because I didn't know anything about it. What did you do when you heard it? Nothing. Did you panic? No. I didn't. Why should I panic? Did you call I was it? not planning to commit any crime. How can I remove IGP? Am I the one who appoints IGP? How can Bugri Nabu remove IGP? Is he the one who appoints IGP? It's the president. Was I planning with the president to remove IGP? The whole caption was even totally wrong. What was the purpose of the meeting though, going to Bugri Nabu? Well, why did you want to meet him? I didn't go to Bugri Nabu. Bugri Nabu invited me. 
he invited me. Why? That he told one of my boys that there is a plan. Do I even say a plan? That he has heard that there's likelihood that they are going to appoint a new IGP. Which is no news. The first IGP appointed by Nana Kufado is Mr. Piatu. They appoint another IGP, Mr. Opong. And this is the third IGP that this government has appointed. So if he says that they are going to appoint a new IGP, it's no news. And they are looking for somebody who can do the job. And people have been mentioning my name, but he doesn't know me, so he wants to see me in person. That's why I went to Bugina. I didn't go to him. He invited me to Asari. So he called you? Yes. Or Asari came he to tell him was looking? He called Asari, and Asari called me. But it didn't strike you. Why is Burkina calling you? He's not, you've said it, he's not the appointed authority. You know, he's just an MPP. Un, un, unless somebody Stalwart. doesn't want to speak the truth, there is no position in this country that people don't lobby. Or people don't hold people's hands to go and seat appointing authorities. You understand? Mm. Yes. So that was no news. So when he called you, what was it? What was? Did you understand his objective for yes, calling you? Yes, I do. I, I, I did. Yes. What, what was his objective? He wanted to see me, so that you know the person that people are mentioning that if they want to change this IGP, this should be the right person. And any police officer who will say that he wouldn't want to become the IGP, that's the highest position in the rank. The highest position in the service. And anybody who joined the service will wish. But not everybody who will get there. You understand? Mm. Yes. So when you were going there to meet him, when, as you said, he invited you, did you intend to lobby him to help you meet the president? Yes. That, is his, that was his intention. That he wanted to see me before he can go and mention me to the president. That mm. for his information, this is the person that people are talking about that he can become the next IGP. But he has said publicly that you came to see him. I just, I, I, I don't want to say anything about Bugri Abu now here. Yeah. But, but he's he already has the public domain. He was so just you lying. Came, so you came oh, to see he was him. lying. He called me. Asari said it at the at the committee and as I said he called him about 16 times that very day if I came or if I went to see him did he know that I was coming to him so at what time did he go and buy the supposed recording machine that he was talking about but he, he and somebody plotted and put that recording machine there and called us called us invited us to come because he knew he has plotted that in there. Do you think he set you up? Oh, yeah, he set it up. Yeah, he set us up. That's what he did. With what intention? Pardon me? With what intention? I don't know. He must say it. I don't know. He did it. He did it in Konevai with somebody. Who? I don't know. So you say he set you up. But there must be an objective. You, you should know of by now. Of course, there's an objective. That's why I told the committee. What, what is the objective? That if they want the real, the actual recording, they should call the IGP. I said it at the committee. Because well, well, he knew something about it. He and Brooklyn have set it up. But there's no evidence to back this. There's absolutely no evidence to support the view that the IGP knew something about that this. That is why I asked them to find out themselves. Because my intel, because this tape which was leaked, whose advantage would, would it be? Me? Or Brooklyn Abu? Who? Yeah, Brooklyn Abu, obviously. Why, 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 why would we get the, this leaked tape? Because you had gone to see him to plot to remove the IGP? I didn't go to see him. He called me. Can Bugri Nabu remove IGP? How can I plot to somebody who cannot remove somebody to go and remove that person? But he had influence with the president. He carried a bit of influence with the president. That is what he's saying. In, in, but in the recording, we had you urge him to get the message across of course, to the president. That is what he, that is what he, he was trying to say. That he can't 
do this and that and that and that. You understand? Yes. So he set it up. And he set it in connivance with somebody. You still don't know who that person is? Oh, I know. <laughs> I've said it and I'll say it anyway. I know. Mm. But I don't expect that person to come and sit and say, yes, I did it. No, he will not. Mm. Yes. But in this tape that we also heard, we heard you also link your potential suitability for the position to, the, to an advantage for the MPP in the 2024 elections. In fact, we heard you say, linking it to the election that I just ended, the by-elections, um, and said that the IGP obviously will not allow the MPP to have its way, and you is in the best position to facilitate the course of the MPP in the 2024 elections. I never said that. I never said that. But what did you say? Because the tape is clear in which there was, there was clearly an agenda for 2024 and how you are more suited in advancing the MPP's course yes. for the 2024 elections. If you are going to lobby for a post and go to a politician, will you tell him something that will let you know that you can't do anything for him? That's a good question that anybody, everybody should answer. <laughs> so so your, pitch, your pitch to him was you could help the MPP? Of course. If I'm going to lobby you, to go to the head of Joy FM, to recruit me, you think I'm going to say something that will not be of benefit to Joy FM? Will you go ahead and tell your boss, no? That's lobby. But as a senior police officer at the time, that was a blatant violation of police it's not. of police internal it's rules. It's not. It's not. Anybody who says that doesn't ethics. know what he's talking about. Police, you're supposed to be apolitical. That's not true. You can be partisan. That's not true. The, the, we the are not supposed to do overt politics. Yes, but yes. that was but that was overt. That was not politics. overt. It was a discussion between me and somebody secretly. It was not standing in the public and shouting. Uh, no. But in that, that overt. but in that meeting, you were doing overt politics. It wasn't, you were actually it wasn't overt. promising him. No, it wasn't overt. It, it, you it was are between two people. It was not in public. It was not in the public domain. Whoever brought that thing to the public is the one who is causing the public confusion. He is the one we should look for. You were in the process then. And you made the point that you were not about to commit crime. Yes. But you were actually in the process of violating police procedure. No. Of I never violated any police procedure. By pitching your ability to use your position if you become IGP mm -hmm. to the advantage of the, the political party. No. That clearly how is a violation I, how of can police. I, how can, I, how can IGP help a political party to win an election? But you just said that's your pitch to the to no. Bugina. I didn't say so. To help told him as a politician of course that you help him once they appoint you you will help the party not that, but that helping the party doesn't mean you are going to do something which is bad how do you help a party but you that, manage but the police service well explicitly forbidding you as a police, police officer pardon me? from doing no, exactly not that helping any political you're party not, not, no. how you manage the police service for all police officers to be happy to see that things are going well in the police service. You are helping the, poli the political party that appointed you. Because if you manage the police service in such a way that about 90% of the police officers are angry, they are unhappy, you are not helping the party that appointed you. Because all those people, you don't take it, they are going to vote against that party that appointed you. E except that in the audio we heard, the voice was clear about the 2024 elections. Of course. Of course. So it was about. Of it course. Was about, it, it was about election because in 2024 election, if all police officers are angry, if the head of the police service is not managing the service well, and a lot of police officers are angry, don't you think it's going to affect their voting? Not only them, their wives, their kids, their family members. But also, the by elections that had just finished was mentioned specifically 
that the IGP in the by-elections, and we saw how the MPP was very unhappy with the conduct of the IGP because, I mean, as at one time the General Secretary had said publicly during the by-elections, uh, in Asin, the the they were not happy that he had been very strict and that and the general secretary believed that affected the party negatively that was specifically referenced anybody who said who says that is a liar that's why i said that audio has been talked because the meeting took place before the by election so how could i have referred to the by election that because of, of what the IGP did, the MPP were not happy. The meeting, the recording took place before the by-election. So how could I have referred to the by-election? Totally false. A doctored audio. I need to ask you, I mean, because you're a senior police officer, if you, in your position, your immediate subordinate had been seen lobbying, mm -hmm. sitting with another a politician, mm -hmm and making him promises about how he can help his political party yes. if he gets the nod. Yes. You would definitely trigger the internal police disciplinary procedures against that person, no, would you? No, I will not. If you have to do that, then some of those people over there have, have been dismissed a long time ago. But I'm curious why you won. When your service rules, as you've just said, forbid you from doing overt, explicit, Partisan politics. Yes, but I have not done any overt. But partisan politics. But speaking to a politician in the office secretly is not overt politics. Yeah, but except that that conversation, if indeed was not meant for the public. If indeed you got the position, mm -hmm. which is what you were seeking to achieve, to lobby. Yeah. You have to keep your promise to him, and that promise will inv invariably then mean that the <laughs> will then be commandeered for the cause of one political party against the other? No, the service should be commanded properly for the people in the service to be happy. And that can influence their vote. Mm. Yes. The service had begun an internal disciplinary procedure against yes, they, they have not begun anything. And had to be reversed because the process of parliament... They didn't begin anything. Well, we saw the statement. That was totally missed. They didn't know what they were doing. Do you have any regrets at all? No. In doing what I will you never did. regret. You see, God has his own way of blessing people. Mm. Had it not been for this tape, maybe you wouldn't have been here. My name and my picture wouldn't have been where it is circulating now. Now, if you go to my constituency, everybody knows me. Everybody is looking for me. My friends that for years have not heard of me. They are calling me from US, UK, Japan, everybody. God has his own way of bringing up somebody. Sometimes you will not understand. But at the end of the day, then you understand, oh, I thought this was a problem, but that was a way that the Lord is using to bring you up. So you said this leaked tape has actually blessed you? It has. It has. In what way specifically, apart from people so calling So many ways. You? So many ways. A lot of, the number of calls I'm receiving, my brother, at least now, it has made the public know that something is not going on well in the Ghana Police Service, as we speak. For now, at least, people have gotten to know. But you've been they known, know. but publicly, you've been known as the COP who plotted to remove the IGP. That is to those who want to know that. But some also know me as the COP who have saved the Ghana Police Service. Depends on where you are thinking. IGP Dampari. Yes. When this was happening, we did a poll and asked citizens broadly whether they believe that they've seen improvement in the service, in the police service, in the way they relate to the citizens. And I, we asked that question, remember, that they, they, the objective, the ultimate objective of the police service is to the citizens. Overwhelming, more than 70% yeah. of the people who responded yeah. said under his leadership, they've seen great improvement in the police like service towards the citizen. You should ask specific questions. Great improvement like what? Well, they are looking, they are judging the overall 
perception of the police. You should be specific. And in the relationship, and in the relationship with the citizens, you see, you see, over overwhelming majority. If you conduct those things in the social media, indefinitely, you have overwhelming majority. So clearly, citizens no, love the IGP. Go down leadership. there. Don't use the social media. Go down there. Go down there and ask the questions. No social media. People can just hold on to the social media. They know how to capture social media. Don't do it in the social media. Go down there and do it. But the service, we are called the service yes. because you're serving the citizens. Serving the citizens. So the citizens view matter more than yeah, a few police officers in the of service. How many of us go on social media? Our great grandfathers and who even some don't even don't even know how to do text messages. How many go to social media? But this police How many service. Ghanaians go to social media? How many Ghanaians read all those things? But this police service, its image has significantly improved, has it not? Under this current IGP. That is. We see the discipline on no, our roads. No, that is your judgment. Now. We see the discipline on our roads now. Yes, that is your judgment. That's because of him. That is your judgment. You disagree no, no, I will, that? I will, I will not argue with you in that regard. Because everybody has got his own judgment. You don't see that discipline has improved on our streets? I don't see anything. Is it you, you, do you hate the IGP? No. Why should I? I will hate your style, but I will not hate you. Your style of leadership is different from your person. You understand? I will hate your style of leadership, but I will not hate you in person. He I will tell you point blank. Whether you like it or not, that's your matter. I've spoken my mind. Finish. He called you his brother. Of course. I can also call you my brother. You consider him a brother too? Yes, of course. Why not? Do you agree? Do you admit that in that meeting, it was indeed a plot to remove him? No, it wasn't. You see, that's where I don't get it. <laughs> How do you plan to remove IGP? Those who are having the meeting, who can remove IGP? Myself? Bugiri Nabu? Or Asari? You have the power to move IGP? Bugin Nabu has a relationship with the president. Has he, has he got the power to move IGP? He has a relationship. Is he the, with the one president. who appointed the IGP? If indeed he's the one who appointed the IGP, then yes, then he can remove him. You understand? Then he cannot. Have you met but the president at all? Yourself? In respect of this conversation since no, this happened? No, no, no. Why? Why should I meet the president for this? No. This is not, you see, people see these things as very important. I don't see it that way. It's not. This is a conversation between two. I don't see it. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. Have you confronted Brooklyn Nabu since this happened? I don't have time. Have you spoken to the IGP since no. this happened? Do you intend to? No. Is your relationship with him destroyed? No, it's not destroyed. If I need to speak to him, I will speak to him. But now, he's no longer my boss. I'm not a police officer. I don't need to call him for anything. If I need something as a retired officer, I need to talk to him, I'll call him. But for now, I don't need anything from him, so I will not call him. Since this happened, how's your family reacted to it? My family? You know, of course. When it came, they will be worried. Yes. But they know me. And once they call me, I tell them, this, 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 oh. Yeah, they became relaxed. God, they know me. They know what I can do and what I cannot do. Well, they were worried because they felt that... Because they, they, they didn't know what actually transpired until I told them what transpired. And they so, said, oh, is that so? Okay, then. It's okay. And you said that you believe that the IGP's leadership has been autocratic. You don't like their style. Yes, of course. But you were in the service. What did you do whilst you were in the service about that? What can you do? Did you speak to him about it? You can't. You can't just tell him, but if he can decide to listen to you or not. But you Just advise. You advise your boss and he doesn't want to take, what can you do? You, you did, did you actually do that? Oh, several times. You said this wasn't a coup, but it was a coup to remove. How can, how can it be a coup? At least three people in the room having a conversation. We don't remove IGP. IGP is appointed. It's not an election. Uh, 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 a position that we elect. Mm. It's only a position that we elect that you can do a coup d'etat and then you move. There's an appointing authority with the president in consultation with the Council of State. 
So if I go to the president and tell him that, Mr. President, the man you appointed is not doing what he's supposed to do. It's not a coup d'etat. I'm giving the president information so that he can rethink and take another decision. Have you been to the president no. to say this to him no. directly? No. Have you said it be, be beyond Buginabu? Have we had any conversation? There was also the, no. there's also the interior minister. Have you no. had a conversation with him? No. That's why I said I did not go to Buginabu. He called me. So categorically, you never had a plan to have the IGP removed? No. How can I remove? That's why I, what I don't understand. How you're, can you're, I remove IGP? You obviously had influence or affiliations with the NPP, even whilst you're in service. Yes, of course. Yes. You, uh, you never used that influence no. or that relationship with with no. MPP folks to try and get the IGP removed? No. Never once. If I have that influence, if I have that, then why didn't I use that influence to get me appointed instead? Well, the, the president simply didn't believe that possibly you were qualified or competent for it. And that's why he it gave it to the It means I IGP. didn't use anybody to do, to, do that, to do that thing for me. Or it could also I be I was that telling them that what he is doing is not helping the service. So you say you're, te you're telling them who? So beyond Buginabu, you have not spoken to anybody no, else in the MPP? I haven't. Not a minister? No, if I have, no, no. I have spoken to somebody to be privately between me and my friends, but that one is a private conversation. I will never, mm. ever bring a private conversation on air. Whilst you were in the service, did you speak to some of your colleagues yeah, about your concerns? Of course. It's not only me who was complaining. A lot of them. But it's not everybody who is bold enough to come out. Even if Buginabu had not clandestinely in Konabas with somebody to tape and bring this thing out, I wasn't going to tell anybody. I wasn't. Why should I? Did you undermine the IGP whilst no, you were how in the service? How can I undermine IGP? You can't. You can't undermine IGP. In the police service, it's difficult for you to undermine. You understand? Because the person who gives instructions is him. How do you undermine? And that's uh, COP George Alex Mensa, who is my guest on PMS. And I won't return. He, he's on retirement, but he's taking on a new profession. He wants to be a, a full time politician. He's going into politics. He wants to run for parliament on the ticket of the MPP. We'll ask him why. And then we'll also talk about the committee hearing itself. It's been quite an experience, I believe, for him. We'll talk to him about what he expects of the committee now that they are almost at the end of the proceedings. Stay with me. We are still on PM Express. My guest is COP George Alex Mensa. You know him. He is a man who has uh, taken a lot of the media space because of the alleged plot to remove the IGP and that leaked audio and video that we've seen play at the committee uh, in Parliament and also on, in, on social media. He's generated a fair bit of controversy and is my guest on PM Express tonight. George, so. The committee then got involved in Parliament, yeah. as far as this tape is concerned. They are almost at the end of, of the process. Yes. What's your view on the work that the committee has done so far? For me, they are doing a perfect job. Because they are looking for the truth. And they've gotten all the truth to assist them come out with their report. Mm. Yes. You are retired, but Mr. Sari is not. He's not. He's in the service. Yes. The police had said that once the parliamentary probe is done, they will link you to internal disciplinary proceedings. It will depend on what the parliamentary probe will bring. But, that, but that's independent of the police's own internal yes, proceedings. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It will depend on it. But it can't be dependent on that, can it? Because the police is independent and they can. And, 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 and what would they do? Into the matter. What would they do? What offence have they committed? 
having a conversation with somebody privately is an offense? Well, but now we know that this How conversation... How did you get to know? Well, then we should look for the person who recorded and brought it out. He's the one who has caused the problem. He's the person who should be charged and disciplined, not the one who had the conversation. Uh, uh, except that the conversation, as we've discussed, also bordered on active politics and the possibility that the police service was going to be used. In the public to, domain. Well, the, the possibility that the police service was going to be used to promote the cause of a political party. No. Certainly, mm -hmm. any police institution that wants to maintain its integrity mm -hmm. would need to discipline officers when they are found to be engaged in such acts. When they are found to be engaged in which act? Conversation? Yes. Oh, Private wow. conversations with Private politicians conversation? to promote the politician's no, political cause. there was nothing like that. People are just misinterpreting everything. But you, you've said to me in this conversation that, that it was a pitch. You were talking to a politician, so you had to promise him something. Of course. Yes, but that is something no, that but I if you are going to do that, then we will dismiss everybody. Why do you say that? Ah, if private conversations are going to come out, you see, you have to be very careful. Private conversations are private conversations. And if you illegally record them, if you take it to court, you'll be thrown away. Are you saying that there are many more police officers oh. having this kind of conversation? I have not heard anybody. But I cannot say that you don't have it. Because nobody has recorded anybody to bring it out. So in other words, it's happening in the police service? I, can't, I cannot, cannot say because nobody has recorded anybody. But if you, if you tell me that police people don't meet politicians, and make promises and they for them. they don't talk politics. When they meet them, they just don't want to speak the truth. Yes. But we don't know their stories. We know yours because yours is now a subject of a public inquiry. But unfortunately for them, I'm no more a policeman. Yes, but for, for Mr. Sari, he still remains a police officer. But what has he done? Uh, what is that? What has exactly done? What just because about. you went to see a politician? And spoke to him and make promises about for what and to make promises about the 2024 no. election. If you go into the police service rules and regulations, they say that if you do anything that will bring a political uproar, then you can be charged. Yes, but this definitely and he is not the one who brought the uproar. It was the person who brought it into the media. No, what well, he, he did it he earlier, he and there wasn't any confusion. It was the person who recorded it brought into the media that had caused it not him it was it, it was it was a plot no it wasn't that, a plot that no, it, it was a plot, plot that was, was uncovered like a plot. through a recording it was nothing like a plot yeah whoever plot to record and bring it out he's the person to be charged and but, disciplined but the, you the senior police officer who knowingly mm -hmm. went into the conversation with a politician with intention to lobby so to if, get so so if I go and speak to the president, I should be charged for speaking to the president. And make promises about no. the 2024 elections. No. no. That's no. why the, he should be disciplined, no. you know? No. Because this course is an uproar in 2024. Can, uh, they, can track, they can start disciplining him, but they will face his lawyers, and they will go to court, and we will see. We will see. <laughs> the person we should look for and discipline is a person who masterminded the recording and the masterminded the bringing into the media domain. He's the person you should look for and discipline. You're not concerned about the reputation of the, the reputational damage this has done to the police service because, because you and Mr. Sari went to have this conversation. It hasn't damaged the police service. We were not talking about the police service. We were talking about the mismanagement by somebody. Yeah, but that is not an allegation that is not proven. That person is different from the police service. Uh, you, the alleged mismanagement yes. isn't proving. It's what? The alleged mismanagement is not proving. It's not proving? Yeah. For now. For now, it's not. Yeah, and the IGP, but from I what I've said. I urge you, the media people, to do your own investigation, not on the social media. Hmm. Go down there. But the public do view the of the IGP not is media. a very positive not one. Not social media. Yeah. Public but, view but you, is but not you, on social but, media. But you concede. You, you know. But even if it's widespread in the police service, you concede that that's a tiny minority. And by the way, the I'm IGP's, the the public IGP's loyalty... Mean, the, the public is loyalty. The public the view public. on social media yeah. Yeah. is not a public view. But you can see the IGP's oh. loyalty is to social media the Constitution. Social media can be hacked by people. And those people will know that you are going to put this question there. Mm. And they will tell their people to come and respond to it. Social media is not public view. Mm. The public view is down there. Go down there and conduct the test yourself. Send people.
go down there and connect with us. Not on social media. Me don't see even on social media. If I see, I don't. I will not even go there. I will not waste my 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 units to go there to answer. Or no, I will not. You you, you you let's so at the end of talking about the committee's hearing. Yes, you retired. Can the police service, if they they come to the conclusion that what you did before you retired brought the name of the police service into disrepute, police service cannot do post post your retirement. So the, the police service cannot do anything to me. If the committee comes out that I have committed a crime, then the state can do something to me. I have nothing to do with the police service as I speak. You retired with all your benefits. I have nothing to do with the police service as I speak. But you retired with all your benefits. Yes. But that is in jeopardy if indeed nothing can be in jeopardy. Adverse, no, adverse findings are made against you. If a crime. And even that one has to go to court for the court to prove. That indeed, I've committed a crime. Yeah. Yes. You're going to politics. Yes, I am. You're going to politics. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about that next. He is vying to go to parliament in Bekwai on the ticket of the new patriotic party. But Bekwai is a constituency currently, in, in terms of parliament, occupied by the first deputy speaker of parliament, George Sowusu. It's going to be a, an uphill task for a man who just left the police service to jump into an arena that uh, he's not really familiar with. Or is he? Stay with me after this. And thanks for staying with us. My guest is still COP, George Alex Mensah. Retired. And I must add the retired because <laughs> you're now venturing. Very important. Very important. <laughs> you're now venturing into <laughs> politics. Why? Yes. I'm retiring. I've finished my service as a policeman. I need to do other things. But why the politics? The people in my community are going me. You're a chartered accountant. You could have done that. You're a lawyer. You could have gone into practice. But you chose to go into politics. The people in my country are calling me to come and assist. Because our honorable first day speaker says that he's tired, wants to relax. So my people are looking for somebody who can replace him. And they are calling me. And I cannot deny them. Because they help me to be what I am today. Why do you believe you're qualified to be the member of parliament representing the people of Bekwai? What qualifies you for that? Once I qualify, as stated in the constitution. That's not what I'm asking. <coughs> I think that it's, that we, we take that for granted. <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about beyond that. Why do you think you're the best suited person? Because I've been in the community position. all these years. Throughout my service as a policeman, I've never neglected my community. I go there all the time. My parents are there. Unfortunately, I lost my mother uh, during the 2022 elections. But my father, my sisters, my nephews and nieces, they are all there. You've nurtured the constituency? Yes. Even when you were in the service? Yes. You want to run because the, the, the party is about to open. It's like they open nominations. So you picked up forms? No, they have not opened yet. I mean, the, the elections are soon. I mean, in, it should be in, in February. In February, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have. But they, they have not opened yet. Yes. Yeah. But to, to qualify to run in these elections, yeah. you must be a card bearer yes. member of the party. Yes. You definitely. must have been a card bearer member for, yes. for more than a year. For two years. For two years, yes. to be more precise. Yes. So you're a card bearer member yes, of the MPP. But to contest in the elections, which is early next year, February, you must have been a Cardberry member for at least two years. Two years, yes. Which means that when you were in the service, you were a Cardberry yes, member in yes. the service. That's overt politics. No, this is not overt. That's, and it, this that's is not the first time. That's being partisan. A partisan you know, this, is not, this is not the first time this is happening. You know that. Somebody resigned. Two weeks, you went and contested a sitting MP in the North. And he's now a member of parliament. He resigned two weeks. I've retired in September. I'm going to contest 
this year February how many months if somebody could do it two weeks yeah but I I'm sitting with you so I need to ask yes, you the question I'm telling you <laughs> beyond holding the card yes. and paying your dues to also run the constituency you must have nurtured the constituency of course. over time yes now nurturing the you constituency, have to do it underground you know, well nurturing the constituency yeah. you, you you have to be you have to do it openly not openly well you have to nurture the constituency. No, you don't have to do it openly that, that clearly puts you in the area of overt politics no, you don't have to do it openly so how are you, you doing know it? how to do it you should know and learn how to do it how are not you doing openly. it openly how are you doing it as for how i was doing it i will have no right to discuss but once i qualify that's it but oh, I, I did it. But, but I need to probe that a bit more. If you were actively nurturing the constituency, that definitely is active politics. It's not active partisan politics. No, no it's not active partisan politics. No. It's not active partisan politics. Maybe we need to go to the Supreme Court for constitutional interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> because, because if you know anything about <laughs> politics, to nurture a constituency, you have to be engaging with its delegates. You have to no. be engaging with its no. with, with its structures no. in the constituency. No, you don't need to. Do you have to be engaging with the people. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. But how else? You, you can be assisting the party without engaging in all these things. There are some people when a party comes to power, they appoint them as ministers, but you never have seen them standing on the party platform campaigning. Chobe, Chobe, no. Mm. We have a lot of Ghanaians here who are sponsoring political parties, but we never overtly see them. You understand? Yes. You need to see how you do your things. You do it so that you don't go against the law. But here's the thing, though, COP George Alex Mensah. You were a partisan police officer. I wasn't. I wasn't a partisan police officer. There's nothing like partisan police. I was a police officer, professional police officer. Even though I had a party, but I never brought my partisanship into policing. If you're an NPP man, you go and steal and I have to arrest you, I'll arrest you. That's different. What influence has the police got in politics? A lot. Like what? Well, like making sure that in the election, the security arrangement favors uh, your party. How, how can in the election security favors your party. Once you are providing security, you are providing security for everybody who is coming to vote. Well, you focus including both opposition and then those everybody is coming to vote. Well, you can turn a blind eye in constituencies on areas where your party seems to have a foothold. Oh, so you know that? Well, that's one way you can influence the security arrangement. You know that? You know that? And that is why this question is important, that you were card bearing member, you were a partisan police officer. Yes. People will question yes. that. Yes. That in your position, you, the perception at least is, if you were that involved and engaged in the MPP, you definitely, in certain circumstances, mm -hmm. will be conflicted. No, you will not. The only thing you have to do is provide security. Finish. And you should know that you, the policeman providing the security, I was where we were. We were not the men on the ground. We were just policy makers. I, I'm just curious. How long have you been a card bearing member of the MPP? For now? Yes, I mean, overall. This question will be answered when I go to the vetting committee. I mean, but... No, but no, I won't tell you. But your, con but your, con but your constituents no? are, yeah, I know. Are, will watch you tonight. Yes, yes. But I'll tell the they vetting need to committee. know. How loyal you've been to the party over oh, time? The constituency members, they know. They, they don't need this answer because they know. Well, the constituency is a big constituency. Yes, why? I know. Not everybody knows. Very big. They know. Uh, they know. They are why? At least, the rules say you've been at least... At least I qualify. Yes, you do. But I, I'm just curious how long... So you're supposed to have a, a card for two years and I'm saying I qualify. Hmm. So at least I have more than two years. So I qualify. That's all. So this is your next phase. This is my next to, phase. To, to do politics and to go into parliament. Have you started campaigning yet? Oh, long time. Long time. <laughs> How long is long? Two weeks, oh. two weeks, a month? You know, you don't need to be present to campaign. You only have a team. 
So the team, as I'm here, I'm not just sitting, I'm monitoring whatever is going on in my constituency. Yes, but there are people going around campaigning. How are you able to finance your campaign on the budget of... No, we haven't finished. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> but you, you, the campaign, you said you started, right? Yes. Oh. How are you able to finance your campaign in of Ghana? Course, Very I expensive. Mean, on the budget of a police officer who's just retired. I mean, uh, people will come and assist you. Within the constituency, those who are there who think you can be the best person, they themselves will come and assist you. Mm. And I will even bring you a letter requesting for funding, you, yourself. I see. <laughs> With everything that has happened to you in the last few weeks, you don't see yourself as a liability no. for the party? No, not. As an asset. Directly opposite. I am an asset. What makes you an asset? The negative of what you thought made me a liability is what makes me an asset. You understand? Why would they see me as a liability? What have I done wrong? If I ask you to tell me one good thing about George Akufo Dampari, what would you say? This is a question that I need to sit down and think of it. But you've worked with him for so long. Yes, but you, you said one. Yeah, one, one. You, when you're talking about one, you have to come out with the best. Okay, well, let me, let me even make it easier. Just, now, just tell me, just tell me anything but, good but, about but, but him. For now, I can't tell you anything about it. Maybe later. You have nothing positive to say about him. Oh, why not? Why not? You do. Yes. I just want to share with no, me. No. But, okay. You, when you visit the police headquarters, you see that they have made the place look very nice. That is, that's good. Very good. If you can do that for all police stations and all police buildings. You shouldn't stop just at the police headquarters. Mm. You should go to the Tassano police station. Mm. You should go to all other police stations in all the district regions and do the same. Yeah. So, so you that's like a good thing, but it should not end there. So you, so you like what he's done with the police yeah, headquarters? Yeah, but it shouldn't end there. You should do more. You understand? Mm. Yes. And that is COP George Alex Mensah, retired. We wish him well in his next face the political face, the partisan political face, as he vies to lead the NPP in the Bekwai constituency. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, brother. <laughs>